All right, so when we come back on a Monday, we know that we're in the middle of assignment two, but it's always good to check on our course outline. You can open it right from the homepage. And we are now officially in fall, though it doesn't feel like it in Texas. Yep. So we have September 23rd, that's today. We have our deadlines. So assignment two is due today. That means it's due, posted into Canvas by 11.59 p.m. It would be wonderful if you could meet all the requirements, which would be the vision sketch with the finished creature head to toe, saved as a PNG with no background showing. But anything you submit will show that you've acknowledged the deadline and will allow you to resubmit for more points later. So just make sure you don't let that deadline get by you. We also are going to do a presentation critique for assignment two in class today, probably about an hour and a half. And then question of the day two is also due today, which we discussed briefly at the end of last class just to get everyone focused on it. It's about copyright protections. You want to get your answer in by 11.59 tonight. We're also going to be introducing our proving ground, which will be due next class, and that will be the first thing you need to earn your creative problem solving badge. What are we learning today? Complexities of light and shadow. We're going to be playing with dodging and burning. That's a new thing we're learning. We're also going to learn how to use clone stamp. So these take practice. We're going to introduce them in a few different ways. They are new techniques to add to all the compositing techniques we've learned already with exercise one and assignment one. So if we go back to the home page, well, actually I should point out one other thing from our course outline. Next class, Look to your right, look to your left. If there's no one there, try to encourage them through the Canvas inbox to come next class because next class, the 25th, is when you are picking your topics for your group presentations. Right. And we can look at that, that unit. It's under unit uh, 7, I believe, the group presentations. But you are asked to pick a discipline of digital imaging that's going on right now that your whole group can agree is interesting to research. So it might be something like character design or logo design or uh, logo types or shoe design or movie posters or animation, you know, lots of different options. But you're all going to work on a combined presentation for that. Those presentations aren't until October 21st, so a little less than a month away, but you want to have input into what your group presents on. And if you don't make it to next class, you might lose that on your chance to give that input. All right. So now we go to our home page. And in order to continue with and follow our course outline with assignment two, which is unit five, we don't need to go to the unit modules. We can shortcut to it by going to assignments and scroll down just like we did on the workday and go to where we post our assignment. And then if we were proactive and had already posted our sketch, it's already there. Mine will be on the very bottom. And the sketch is required for everyone. So if you haven't posted that into Canvas, go ahead and start a post, post it. And then this is where we got to at the end of work day one. Everything was, this is optional, your work progress, but everything was rough cut and placed but nothing quite matches and nothing really has been blended fully yet. So now I need to find my files and I'm going to open up photo bucket. Just a reminder, you can always see these videos in the NLC arts lab, YouTube, not photo bucket, photo P used to use photo bucket, but then they got greedy. And I can say that because I don't have any sponsors for my videos. So, photo P, and then, let's see, this is annoying. Start using it. <laughs> I want this screen. So instead of opening up my PSD file by double-clicking it, which will open it up in Photoshop, if I want to use photo P, I have to drag and drop it into a browser window where photo P is already opened. So I drag and drop it in, and it will open. Now, if you're having problems with your stuff not saving and not backing it up to your thumb drive, you might want to go ahead and sign in to a free account in Photopea. 
and all it all it takes for their kind of limited cloud storage you get half a gig of cloud storage not a whole lot but um it will be kind of a, a cloud backup for you it doesn't replace the back backup need for backing up to your computer and to your usb drive but that might save you some headache if you're having trouble with that all right now what can i do well the first thing i can do is be mindful of what layers i have and what space i have so i've organized these two folders one for the head one for the body and then i've got my sketch and the first thing i need to check is my image size image image size and we want this to be larger than 8 by 10 inches by at least 300 pixels per inch just around our character right our creature so mine is 30 by 40 inches by 300 because i gave myself all that working space now i am safe to crop it closer to my creature so it means it will be at least 8 by 10 at 300 pixels per inch that is our requirement. And that makes it a nice size for a portfolio. So now I check my image size after I've cropped it. And I have 13 by 19 inches by 300. So plenty big enough. So it's okay if your creature ends up being bigger than your sketch. Just because you had Pixabay and you used high quality references. Now, the goal is, how do I clean it all up? So, I'm going to start with the focal point of the head. The head is the focal point of the creature design. The eyes are the focal point of that head. So, I'm going to go right to, I'll turn off the body for now, go right to the head and find those eyes. All right, now I am going to blend those eyes in. I've done this a little bit, like erasing away from the edges with a soft edged eraser. But what I haven't really taken the time to do yet is use my image adjustments to help the color. And I can tell already that I like the color of the eyes. I'm on the crop tool. I don't want to be on the crop tool. I like the color of the eyes, but I don't like the kind of reddish tint that's around them. So I'm going to go first to image adjustment. And what's the first image adjustment we use? Levels for lights and darks, right? And I get this little histogram. And I'm going to use this mid-tone slider and see if it should go to the left or to the right. And that's pretty much how we use all of these tools because they help us see what's best. I'd say it's an advantage of digital art over traditional is I can see options without having to choose them so i just brightened it up a little bit the other thing i can do with levels before i move on is i can actually limit the highlights a little bit to those eyes whatever you think is appropriate to help it match next i can play with the color and that's going to be what's after levels for the temperature of the color So hue saturation is going to be the third one we use, but it's not the most useful tool. Color, color. color balance. There we go. That's the second one we use. This is the magic one to make the lighting condition the same, the same color temperature. So I'm going to start in mid-tones again, and this time I'm going to push it away from magenta. See how much that helps? It's under image adjustments, just like levels. These are all direct image adjustments. I can play with the others. Again, you just push them left to right and you kind of see what fits. You start with midtones and then you can move to highlights. I usually add some warmth to my highlights and some pools to my shadows just to really help the three dimensionality of it. Okay, now. If I feel I need the big guns, I go to image adjustments, hue saturation. So it's always levels, color balance, hue saturation. It's a good kind of thing to be on the midterm. What are the direct image adjustments? Because we're only going to learn those three. 
Now notice, if I shift that hue scale, it will change the whole spectrum. So this is really dramatic changes. And maybe I want the eyes to be a little bit brighter. So I do that. And then in, saturation is the intensity. If I want them to be just really strong, I can up them, but that makes them harder to match. Or I can even take them down. All right, now I've done that. Now I can go in and use my tablet, <coughs> excuse my voice, and my eraser. And when I blend organic into organic, like this, I use a soft brush eraser, 0% hardness, fairly large, but I'm going to use it with my tablet, and I'm going to click here to make my brush pressure sensitive. And I'm doing it first at 100% opacity to make sure I don't have any hard edges. And then I'm going to go in at lower opacities and blend. You can see how that works. So now anywhere that color was a little too strong, it now kind of flows through and matches a little bit better. You could go down even to the 20s in opacity. Be really subtle how I transition this fur until the eyes just believably sit in the head. Remember, the eyes are the focal point of the head, so they're pretty important. So now the eyes are in there, and I've got them pretty well blended. It depends on how good your overlaps are, but we're going to learn some other techniques as well. There we go. Next, what about this mustache? It's a pretty big focal point, and its colors are way off. So I'm going to click on that, and then I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Levels. Meg, did you find them? And I'm going to play with that mid-tone slider, and I'm going to brighten up the mid-tones. And I might limit the highlights just a tiny bit. And that's about it, because that's just lights and darks. This is the one that really helps. It's the color balance because this is red and warm. So I'm going to go to mid-tones on color balance. I'm going to shift it away from the magenta and away from the red and a little away from the yellow. And what do you know? I get white. I get something that matches. So color balance, again, this is without it. This is with it. Really can help. So, uh, reference math, references to match. And then I can further that with its shadows and highlights. I go shadows a little bit more towards the blue, just a little. And highlights towards the warm, just a little. And then if I want to swing for the fences, go to adjustments, hue saturation. This is the the not often needed tool, it's like the protractor in the toolbox. But you can play with it, especially as you're getting to learn these tools, whether you want to change the hue and if you want to change the intensity, the saturation. All right, now, this is a tricky one. What do I do to start? Well, I use my eraser to start blending at 100% opacity. 0% hardness on the edge. Might make it a little bit smaller. And the first thing I'm going to do is obliterate that hard edge from my lasso. Just make sure it's absolutely gone. That's why I'm using 100% opacity. And because I'm using a soft edge brush, it's replacing that hard edge with a soft edge. Go a little bit bigger. <clears throat> 